I'm Scott Elmore. It's the 29th of May, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. I'm out at the Parque Infantil, the children's park in Chinandega, Nicaragua. And today we're going to be going to explore the park as they inaugurate the new aquatic park, the Parque Aquatico, here at the children's park downtown. <laughs> you can see behind me these are the lines to get into the public park downtown at Central Park so Central Park and the Children's Park connect diagonally across an intersection and this new aquatic park is an addition to the Children's Park I'm standing in the Children's Park now and this is all new now this is actually happening on June 3rd we're recording this a little bit in the future for you guys because we, we found out from Intour, the Department of Tourism that this was happening today so we just found out yesterday in the evening we jumped in the car as soon as we could today and made it up here they're still in the inaugural inaugural events and it is super loud out here everyone's screaming but this looks like a lot of fun people are excited and there's a lot of people i mean the children's park is full and the aquatic park is a massive line trying to get in so we're going to do our best to see what's in there uh but this is pretty cool once we had a chance to get up to the park, we found out that they're while they're doing a bunch of inauguration activities today, they're not actually letting people into the pools, which is too bad because we had brought the kids and we're thinking they were gonna get to go try it out. We knew it was gonna be crowded. We knew it was at the end of the day. They didn't start their activities until three o'clock and it closes at seven. And by the time we got there and got to the front of the line, it was about five, quarter after five. So it was getting dark as you can see in some of the videos, but it was a beautiful day at the park. It was great to bring the kids up because they haven't done that that particular park yet, whether the Parque Infantil or the Parque Central there in Chinandega, uh, and getting to see that this new aquatic park is there was really cool, but they didn't have anything turned on. None of the fountains were on, nothing like that. The pools were there, but no one could get into them. It was just a crowd using the space, and they had uh, DJs and, and announcers, and they were doing a big like ribbon cutting ceremony, effectively, and a lot of people showed up. Like This is a big community event. People came out to see this in action, and that is really cool that so many people came out and got involved that Chinandega was opening this this new park and the government was getting involved in, and growing the middle of the city this way and it's certainly this is a beautiful addition to the middle of Chinandega it takes an area that was I think like a parking lot before and makes it into something really beautiful and important for the kids this is a place to get out and and cool down Chinandega is the hottest city in Nicaragua by no small margin it is very very hot uh, and so things like this are quite important there now the park that is already there the existing Parque Infantil has loads of fountains and uh, lots of playground space, so that's fantastic. But giving them a place to swim, even better. So we're really happy that we came out, and it's cool to be able to show you the kinds of things that are happening, the new parks that are being added around the country, uh, all over the country. You're seeing stuff like this happening. Uh, Nagarote is a great example. They put in a huge new central park in the middle of the city. It is beautiful, and I hope to stop and show that to you guys as well at some point, but they don't have swimming pools like this. This was a city that already had some great parks, and this is how they expanded it. Nagarote replaced the one, but this stuff's happening everywhere. Similarly, the new Malecon at Granada that I showed you just a couple days ago, another spot where they're adding. So, so much infrastructure of this nature. And you may think that some of this is touristy, and certainly in Granada it is. But here in Chinandega, we get no tourists at all, nor in Nagarote. In the case of Nagarote, it is along the highway and does look great as you drive by. So there's a few of those that they seem to be putting a little bit more effort into things that are by the roadside for lots of good reasons. Not only does it look good for tourists, but it makes the people who live here more aware of what there is and make them happy about it as well. But here in Chinandega, we're talking about the middle of the city. Like the only people that are going to stumble upon this are Chinandeguans, I think it's called, uh, Chinandegans, uh, people who live in Chinandega uh, because it's not on a path to anywhere. There's no main road going past it and there are no tourists whatsoever that come into Chinandega. And so this is this is truly what's being done for the people who live here, uh, and it's, it's, it's really wonderful. 
I'm gonna keep today's video on the short side because we've been very far behind on videos and it has been a struggle just to keep up. And if I make a lot of content, it actually takes a lot more time to edit, a lot more time to upload, a lot more time to get ready for you guys. And uh, I wanna get some of these moving and I wanna get this one up almost in real time because I want people who are in the area to see that we're covering current events like this in Chinadega. We were invited up by Intour, by the Department of Tourism, uh, to come cover this and uh, very glad that we did. Do wish we had a little bit more information. We've been a little bit more prepared, but it was cool that we got to see it uh, and important. Um, after that, we, we came back and did dinner. Since we were up there, we stopped at Dragonfly. Fantastic restaurant. I talk about it a lot when we're up there. I've learned I just want to get the Wan Fly, which is the crab rangoons and the uh, the raw tuna nachos, absolutely fantastic. That's what I eat every time. Uh, Luchana's figured out she can get pasta there. Lisa likes getting sushi there. It was actually interesting. There were so many people. So Dragonfly is one of the more expensive restaurants in the area, meaning all of Leon and Chendega. Western Nicaragua, Dragonfly's on the upper end of pricey. Not the most pricey, but certainly in the top handful. And as such, you would expect that in a place like Nicaragua, the audience for that would be relatively small and heavily expats. Well, Ch uh, Chinandega being a non-touristy city and not on a path to anything, does not have tourists and Dragonfly does not get any. As an expat who goes there, I am extremely rare. I have never seen another expat there and I only know one or two who have ever said that they've gone there. So it is a big deal that uh, uh, that when you go there, there are hundreds of people. They actually had a VIP room with over 100 people in it. There were hundreds of people there. Hundreds. There was, the outdoor seating was full, the indoor seating was full, and a VIP room with more than 100 people in it. It was amazing how busy it is. And for a family of four, we clocked in at $50 with no drinks. We only had water, which is not super expensive. If you're in the United States, you're going to say, well, that's a great deal. If you watch my episode on budgeting, you're going to say, well, you're certainly not going to hit your $100 a day if four people are eating at a fancy restaurant for that. That's like $12, $13 per person. And you're right. It shows how hard it would be to hit the $100 per day, but still possible. Remember, I got only appetizers. Luchana got pasta. If you're getting a tomahawk steak three times a day, yeah, you'd be dead soon, but you could rack up the price a little bit. But the point is at those kinds of prices where you're looking at in the teens and most people, it is very rare for Nicaraguans not to have a drink with dinner, at least if you're going out for a fancy dinner like at Dragonfly. So most people are much more likely to be in the 15 to $20 uh, per head total price. And that hundreds of people were out doing that on a Saturday night on June 3rd was really awesome to see. It shows just how many absolutely just Nicaraguans are coming out and going to those kinds of restaurants and looking for those kinds of services and activities. It's very, very encouraging. So when we're talking about who's able to use these resources, especially in Chinandega, you are seeing a lot of Nicaraguans who are out doing that in a spot where expats are not being considered whatsoever. After dinner, we came back and then we had to run out to the beach. We had a birthday party tonight, so we went out and hung out at one of the new hostels in the barrio and then went to Pelican Surf uh, for late evening stuff. And I had to get back and upload the video. So if you guys saw, uh, it would have been yesterday's video and some of you commented that at the end of it that I was not sounding uh, as good as normal. That is because I was recording that audio after many drinks at 5 a.m. as I tried to get the final touches on getting a video uploaded for you. So yes, I was incredibly exhausted and somewhat intoxicated and uh, it was crazy late at night and I was in a mad rush because there wasn't enough time to upload it before, so for it to process and get live for you, we're pushing it to, and that's why we're keeping this one short because we just don't have time uh, to do it. We gotta build up a little bit of buffer and then we'll be able to, to have more time to edit and more time to record and be a little bit more creative instead of rushing at the last second. And I said that just as the sun goes down behind the clouds, it is about, to set here and it is time for me to say goodbye. So please remember to like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, now pop that link up here, buy me a coffee, really helps a lot. If you'd like to get some direct one-on-one -on -one support for looking at relocating to Nicaragua or somewhere else, what it takes just to have a discussion, need someone to look at houses. And remember, it takes weeks to even see a single house. It is a huge process. I know it sounds crazy, but that's why, one of the big reasons why it's so hard to find a house here is the incredible amount of cajoling you must do to be able to see a house, if you can even contact someone. Uh, or if you're looking for tours or whatever, send us an email, info at relocatenicaragua.com. As always, share with your friends, 
tell your family, post on social media, put those links wherever you can, and I will see all of you tomorrow.